You're tuned into the first newscast devoted to the Highland Lakes area. Local team coverage on Tribune Headline News. Bringing you the stories you care about now. Hi everyone, this is Tribune Headline News, where our stories are your stories. Thanks for tuning us in on Northland Channel 15. Here's a look at the stories we've been working on. We have deadlines for voter registration and new polling locations to tell you about. Also, taxes are going up in Llano County. Burnett County commissioners keep the rates steady. Both are making room for cost of living wage increases by tightening their belts. Those stories, plus slight rain chances in the forecast and a Friday night football preview in this broadcast. But first, the Lower Colorado River Authority will ask the state for permission to cut the water supply to rice farmers on the Texas coast to protect the levels in the Highland Lakes. The request depends on whether the combined levels of Buchanan and Travis drop below a certain point by January 1st. Rice farmers in Wharton, Matagorda, and Colorado County account for about 57 percent of the water usage of the lakes. The level here is about 790,000 acre feet. To avoid water supply cutoff, the level would need to rise to 850,000 acre feet. That would take substantial rainfall. The LCRA is expected to make the request to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to deviate from the state's current water management plan. Farmers believe it would be catastrophic to the coastal rice industry responsible for about 5% of the nation's total rice production. The move is considered an emergency measure to protect water in the Highland Lakes used for consumption and utilities. Since last October, Texas has seen the driest 11-month period since recorded rainfall totals in 1895. Lakes Buchanan and Travis are currently considered about 40% full. In our next headline, Burnett and Llano County Commissioners find ways to give employees cost of living increases, but it comes with a price. First in Burnett County, Commissioners balanced a $20 million budget, kept taxes steady and factored in a 2% raise for personnel. To stay in the black, department heads slashed spending 10%, trimmed indigent health care and put construction projects on hold. In Llano County, commissioners penciled in a 3% cost of living raise for county employees, but expect to raise taxes by 4%. Health insurance premiums will go up from 7 to 10% for both counties. Coming up later on this broadcast, we bring you the list of new polling locations in Burnett County and the deadline to register to vote. There's hope for rain, but I'll tell you our chances later in the forecast. Because experience matters. For home, auto, business, health, and life, we are here for you. When Galloway experts make top providers compete for your business, you win. The Galloway Insurance Team, since 1935. Burnett, Horseshoe Bay, and Marble Falls. We're back. We may see some relief from the triple-digit temperatures, and that could come with rain, too. Here's Jared Fields with more. Hello, everyone. Connie, we've got a chance of showers today, but nothing that would want to make you find some rain boots and a rain jacket. Highs in the low 90s with calm winds. Otherwise, here's the rest of your Highland Lakes forecast on Northland 15 and the Picayune TV. Thursday, we've got a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms after 4 p.m. That means we've got an 80% chance that it won't rain. Partly sunny otherwise with high near 93, winds out of the south at just 5 miles an hour. Thursday night, that chance increases to 30%, mainly after 7 p.m., mostly cloudy otherwise with a low at about 63. Friday, it's our first day of fall, everyone. Mostly sunny with a high near 90, not too bad for a fall day. North wind at about 5 miles an hour. And then Friday night, mostly clear and will cool down to a low of 67. Winds out of the north at just 5 miles an hour. And because I like you, I'll give you a sneak at the weekend forecast. Enjoy low 90s Saturday because things are warming up to the high 90s as we get into next week. That's all you get right now. For more on the weekend weather, catch us tomorrow for a complete look. Have a great day, everyone. For Northland 15 and the Picayune TV, I'm Jared Fields. Thanks so much, Jared, for that report. We spent a lot of time at Burnett High School. We're going to tell you about the teams we stopped in and checked on coming up in sports. Coach Larry Berkman takes a hands-on approach to coaching and he takes that same approach to handling your car. 
So join Coach's team and give your car, truck, or boat the MVP treatment at Coach Wash, where our customers call the plays. We are established. We are qualified. We are certified. We are knowledgeable. We are dependable. We are Ken's Heating and Air. Our people make the difference. We're going to do a heavy dose of Barnet Athletics, and that's because we're going to cover two extremely important teams. The first one, of course, is going to be the Barnet football team, which travels to Gatesville on Friday night for 7.30 kickoff. We did get a chance to talk to head coach Doyle Walker about this 3-1 Hornets team, a very dangerous 3-1 Hornets team. Here's what he had to say. I think they're going to be pretty balanced, you know, pass and run, and, and I think they're going to try to establish a running game early, and and then, you know, if they need to, they'll throw the ball, and they've got some receivers that can go get it. So we'll see what happens. What about their defense? Defensively, boy, they're stout defensively. They're scary, and, and they throw, you know, several different fronts at you. They're, they're sending linebackers, and, and uh, they're very sound with their linebackers, and uh, their defensive line is quick as cats, and they're strong, and... Uh, you know, they could pose some problems for us. In addition to that, the Lady Dog Volleyball team finished up its non-district schedule with a 3-2 victory over Bernie High on Tuesday night. Senior outside hitter Kristen Spin led the way with 13 kills and 18 digs. That means now the Lady Dogs are ready to roll for the start of District 25-3A play when they travel to Lano to face the Lady Jackets, who swept Ingram three games to zero on Tuesday night, led by Sierra Jordan's 13 kills, 10 digs, and three aces. Game time for that, 6 o'clock at Lano Gym, the high school. That's it for sports. I'm Jennifer Fierro. Connie, back to you. The deadline to register to vote in the November election is right around the corner, and those going to the polls have a new place to cast their ballots this time around. The last day to register to vote or apply for a new card for an address change is October 11th. Folks need to know the voter ID rules will not go into effect until 2012. However, there's a list of new polling places. Dozens of locations will be replaced by six. Here's a list of some of the consolidated polling locations. They include Granite Shoals Community Center and the Spicewood Community Center, as well as the Burnett County Courthouse. Let's take a look at some of those election topics. November 8th, emergency services taxing districts in Marble Falls and the Granite Shoals area, Kingsland Incorporation, and a handful of state constitutional amendments. You can go to the website on your screen for a sample ballot on Friday. Those were your headlines. Thanks for watching. The Picayune Roundup is coming up next with images and information about the next farmer's market in Burnett and the citywide garage sale in Marble Falls. For the Picayune TV, I'm Connie Swinney. Hello everybody, I'm Amber Weems. You're watching the Picayune Roundup. This is the Picayune TV. Thanks for tuning us in on Northland Channel 15. In this week's episode, we tell you where you can go to sharpen your driving skills. Also, we have a place to pick up homemade jams, baked goods, and seasonal vegetables. Those features in a moment. But first, here's an event where you can find everything and the kitchen sink. Preparations are underway for the Marble Falls Citywide Garage Sale. Organizers are currently taking signups for booth space. It's a great way to turn your old stuff into a treasure for someone else. The garage sale is in Johnson Park from 9 to 4 on October the 1st. That's a Saturday. You can go by the Chamber of Commerce on 2nd Street to sign up now. Space is just $20. Call the number on your screen to find out more. In our next feature, free range eggs, baked goods, jellies, organic vegetables, and Texas raised beef. Sound like a farm setting to you? Well, it's the Burnett Farmer's Market going on now, Saturdays through November the 19th. During the weekly market, booths line the downtown square. Participants come from all over the area with seasonal items to sell. The list is long, homemade jams, fresh pesto, fruit, and even the freshest herbs. You can even find the best plants, resistant to the drought conditions, and a few other novelties reminiscent of the country. Call the number on your screen to find out more and to become a vendor. If you're feeling a little rusty on your driving skills, you can sign up for an upcoming refresher course. 
Completing it could help you qualify for car insurance discount. The course is Monday, October 3rd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Senior Center at 35 Chamberlain Street. The cost is $12 for AARP members and $14 for non-members. Organizers will provide a lunch. Well, folks, that was your roundup, where the Picayune does good for the community. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, you can check out these stories in the Picayune, the one and only feel-good newspaper in the Highland Lakes. I'm Amber Weems. See you next time. Welcome to the Tribune Scouting Report. I'm Jennifer Fierro here at Mustang Stadium, home of the mighty Marble Falls Mustangs. Of course, the Mustangs are coming off a 35-29 loss to Bernie Champion in, count them, five overtimes. What does that mean? Well, it means the Mustangs should be ready to go now for the start of District 25 for a play when they travel to face the Vista Ridge Rangers. We're gonna stop in and talk to head coach Cord Warner about that, and then of course follow that up with our expert, Judge Martin McClain. All that and more on the Tribune Scouting Report right now. Fall season in Texas calls for Sunday afternoons with friends, football, and of course, barbecue. At Bill Smith Butane, we take care of your fuel needs. Refill your propane bottles at one of our convenient locations and save big money on regular exchange prices. Bill Smith Butane. We're back. We want to thank you for joining us wherever and however you're able to. With me is the head football coach of the Marble Falls Mustangs, Cord Warner, coming off the longest game in Mustangs history. Five overtimes, that's what it took to decide the winner between Marble and Bernie Champion, 35-29, the Mustangs falling for the first time this season. Coach, we really didn't get a chance to talk a whole lot after the game. We were pressed for time. You've had a chance now to get a few, a few days away from it, rather, Give me some of your thoughts and impressions. What do you think you boys learned from Friday? Oh man, there there were so many things. One uh, one that they can play with a lot of good football teams, which is something that uh, you know we've been trying to get them convinced of because that's important. It's important that they have that confidence. Uh, two, uh, even though we're young, we still have to find a way to eliminate making a lot of the mistakes we made. The, the, the turnovers and the penalties put us in a uh, situation where uh, we allowed uh, them to get back in the ball game on several occasions and we have to eliminate that. It's going to hurt us down the road. Of course, you guys are now putting that game behind you. One of the more intriguing things that you said last week is that you thought this champion game would serve kind of as a, a prelude, if you will, to what you'll be facing with Cedar Park Vista Ridge as you now turn your attention to District 25-4A. Vista Ridge coming in at one and three. Is this the best one and three team you've seen in, in the area so far? Oh, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good. They played some good folks. They played some folks with a lot of speed and uh, you know, they're always really solid. They're always pretty physical. Uh, they're gonna come at you. Uh, they come off the edge almost every play, and, and that's going to test our advancement in, in our protection a little bit. Uh, we're going to have to pick that up a little bit. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they're very similar, run similar defenses, um, similar offenses. So uh, it'll be kind of a mirror of what we saw this last week. You had said that you thought Bernie Champion would bring in the best line on both sides of the ball, best D-line, O-line on both sides. D did, do you feel the same way about Vista, that, that this is going to be, you're going to be facing some really good? Oh, well, you know, I hate to, I hate to compare uh, things like that. Uh, the bottom line is, is uh, uh, they've got a lot of folks and they've got a lot of good folks. They're going to they're going to be just as aggressively trying to get that first win uh, as we are, and, and they have uh, uh, some big boys up front to do it. What do they like to do offensively? Well, I mean, the, the quarterback is, uh, he throws well, but he's also quite a bit of a running quarterback. Uh, they run the ball pretty effectively. Uh, they're deceptive at times. Uh, 
run a lot of quick stuff uh, in the passing game. Um, defensively, they're really in kind of more of a 50 look, like to play a lot of man coverage. So, uh, you know, we're going to have a work cut out for us. One of the things that we struggled in 2010 with, at, at this point last year, we were in the midst, we were about to have a three-game losing streak. We had fallen to Burnett two weeks earlier, fell to champion on the road uh, the following week in, in one, of, one of those strange weeks where we had a short week, earlier kickoff time, we were mm -hmm. off of our routine, so, so to speak. And then we host Vista Ridge at home, and it took us about a half to warm up. And then we were able to come back out in the second half, really make a statement. I thought we had come back from behind to win the game. And, of course, Vista Ridge ends up scoring there on the very last drive, take the win. However, we were able to bounce back from that. This week, though, you're coming off this, I don't know if it's a heartbreaking loss in five overtimes. Kind of just give me the mindset of the players right now. Have they been able to put Friday night behind them? And Well, I, absolutely, it's a hard game to lose. But at the same time, uh, you get in there and, and, and you get to scrapping like that, uh, you know where you're at. And you know, hopefully, that uh, um, a little thing here and a little thing there uh, turns that into a W. We can do that, and they understand they can do that. So uh, uh, it is disappointing, yes, uh, but at the same time, I think it uh, it helps our confidence as a young team, knowing that uh, there is room for improvement. If we'd have gone in there and done everything absolutely perfect uh, and still got beat and wouldn't have room for improvement, it's tough to go into one uh, later, but uh, knowing that we have room to improve, we're, we're ready to go. Okay. Now, of course, you are going to be on the road at Vista Ridge. You said Gumpton Stadium, which we think is going to be off of Vista Ridge Boulevard, somewhere in the Vista Ridge High School area, correct? I believe that's correct. It's a, it was a new stadium either last year or the year before. We have not played there, uh, but I believe it is shared by Cedar Park and Vista Ridge. So. Uh, Supposed to be a really nice place. Okay, 7.30 Friday night. We'll see you and the boys there then and look forward to it. And we'll be back right after this. We are established. We are qualified. We are certified. We are knowledgeable. We are dependable. We are Ken's Heating and Air. Our people make the difference. Thanks for staying with us. We want to welcome in our, our our judge. That is true, Judge. Our expert, Judge Martin McLean. And Judge, four weeks, Marble Falls 3-1, got the big win against Burnett there in week three. Huge. I know that you're happy about that. What are some of the impressions you have of the Mustangs now that you've seen them for four weeks? Well, first, uh, it was party night in Burnett. Uh, I know that first, uh, kudos to Coach Warner, the staff, and the Mustangs for that big win. It really made a lot of the community, most all of the community, happy. It's almost, you could say, it's been a good season. <laughs> but <clears throat> back to the real world, we got some games to play and some wins to take if we're going to go down the playoff road. But overall, we've had certainly some pretty good games and uh, a few too many turnovers and penalties and certain game especially the most recent one mm -hmm. by the way that was five overtimes even though we lost the game that's pretty special when you play a five overtime ball game with a good football team bernie champions a good football team we found that out last year and they're good and we're pretty good and going to be better and so we're ready bring them district foes on we're ready now, what do you think about District 25-4A, obviously the defending state champion, four-time state champion in this district? I tell people all the time, you don't have to travel far to see great, great athletes. Do you agree with that? Oh, certainly. The thing about the four-time state champion, Lake Travis, they weren't even the best team in this district last year. Cedar Park uh, beat them the first time they played and lost to them by one point, and that was without Cedar Park's quarterback. Now, to be fair, you know, Lake Travis didn't have their quarterback in the first meeting, but I saw the Morrow Falls Lake Travis game and the, the Morrow Falls Cedar Park game, and I thought Cedar Park was the better team. And Lake Travis wins the state championship. 
tough district, uh, real tough. Three, at least three and four deep, it's very tough. And four of, four of us get to go to playoffs, so that means we gotta get them ducks lined up pretty quick and starting this week. So what are you expecting to see from your Mustangs this week as they start District 25 for a play against a, what I think might be the best one in three team in Central Texas, the Vista Ridge Rangers? Well, you know you know Vista Ridge is good. You know they're gonna be ready for us. I, I think though, we're gonna bounce back, you know, uh, <clears throat> except for a play here and there, we, we get Bernie in the bag Friday night. So that's encouraging. As I watched the ball game here Friday night, you know, the stadium was full. A lot of people on the visitor side, it was full. Uh, magnificent stadium, fantastic ball game. It's pretty big time high school football. And it really makes you feel good when you see a game like that. And certainly could have went either way. Sure, and of course, you know, we had about four or five different scouts from the San Antonio area wanting to come over here to uh, Marble Falls Mustang Stadium, what I call the Taj Mahal here, this <laughs> crown jewel here in Central Texas. So look forward to seeing what the Mustangs can do in 25-4A. Are you feeling good about them right now, Judge? Yes, uh, definitely yes. <clears throat> we, we need to clean up uh, the penalties and turnovers a little bit, and I'm sure Coach Warner can handle that, and I would bet that that's what they're working on this week. And we'll be ready for uh, Vista Ridge we know it's a good team. We also know how important it is to get off to a quick start here in this district because, you know, you got Lake Travis and Cedar Park and Vista Ridge and the guys that we were counting on last year is sort of a, a mulligan. We get that one uh, with Vandergriff and Rouse, maybe not quite so much this year. Uh, we'll have to work, and but we're ready. We got the horses to do it with, and we know what it takes to get the playoffs. That's where we were last year, and so we're ready to go. Okay. Well, Judge, we'll see you Friday night at Vista Ridge Gumpton Stadium, 730 kickoff, and we'll be back with some final thoughts. The Mustangs are going to be hitting the road for the start of District 25 for a play, facing a Vista Ridge squad that is 1-3 on the season. All three of their losses have come by a total of 17 points. What does that mean? Well, it means that the winner of this game has the inside track for a playoff berth. While I don't think that the entire season rides on the outcome of this game, I do think that Marble Falls will take a huge step and do itself a big favor to get a win Friday night. Therefore, look for the Mustangs to put this 35-29 loss behind them to Bernie Champion fairly quickly. That means then that the youth on this team won't dwell on it, which will be huge considering the fact that Marble Falls committed 10 penalties for 90 yards and suffered five turnovers. I don't think the Mustangs are gonna have that kind of outcome throughout this game. And then of course, I think that Zed Warner and company are very motivated. But no matter what happens Friday night, make sure you tune in next week when we wrap up the Vista Ridge game and then get you all ready for the homecoming game against the Rouse Raiders. Until then, I'm Jennifer Fierro. We look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>